Hey guys, how's it going? So today I decided to take my car to the dyno just to get some baseline numbers. I was gonna get numbers for both 93 and E40. So, so the car is just getting set up on the dyno. These runs are gonna be on the MHD Stage 2 Plus off the shelf map. I have a flex fuel sensor, so I'm gonna do numbers for both 93 and E40. I brought the car in with 93 in the tank and then I also have a gas can full of E85 in the trunk about 5 gallons so that's enough to get E40 that way we can see numbers for both the pump gas and E40 on the off the shelf maps for my mods I have a VRSF catalyst downpipe a race ready performance intake this is similar to MST and then I also have a Remus exhaust. This is a full catback exhaust. I have a flex fuel sensor and a Dorch Stage 2 DS25 pump. And this is all tuned on MHC. I'm just getting these baseline numbers because I'm going to go with the Dynamic Auto Works Full Max 2.5 plus turbo. And I wanted to see what the power looked like before I put it on, and then I'll be back to do some more dyno runs after I put it on, see if I can crack into the 600 wheel horsepower number. So that was the first run, and if you guys heard, the car downshifted into third. I had XHP flashed, but it still kept on downshifting. So what we actually ended up doing was leaning on the throttle instead of just fully pressing it down and that's how we were able to get the pulls. And by the way, from back here this car sounds amazing. I'll shut up so you can listen, but the camera doesn't do it any justice. It sounds way better in person. Alright, so these are the 93 numbers. Again, this is on stage 2 plus with MHD. They're honestly a little bit lower than I expected. I was expecting at least 400 wheel horsepower, but we can take a look at the data log just to see what's going on. So this is the first dyno pull. You can see uh, the boost peaks at around 3600 RPM at 22 pounds of boost and then slowly over the RPM it kind of goes down to around 18, 17 PSI. When we look at the cylinder timing correction we can see that the motor is pulling a little bit of timing about like two degrees on the lower RPM and then as you get higher closer to four or five and cylinder one's at nine so that can explain the lower power uh, I did these runs back to back and I didn't really let the car cool down so that might have had an effect on it. Uh, also the IATs, uh, I think they were around 100 for the whole run so not too bad. Uh, now looking at the, the second run, uh, we can see similar thing here uh, with the boost. Uh, this actually peaks around 19 almost 20 at 3500 rpm and then keeps on dropping down to about 17 towards the end and then the cylinder correction again it starts off with negative two degrees on the first cylinder and then eventually goes to around two to four and goes to about negative eight on the the first cylinder and then two to three on the last one and then it gets a little bit better and towards the end cylinder one is the main one pulling timing this is on pump gas so you know the pump gas quality might not be the best and you know ethanol content that's at 12 so that's basically E10 pump gas and then last thing I wanted to look at was waste heat duty cycle this shows how hard the turbo is working so you can see it's at around 
85 and then around peaks at around 88 towards the top end so this really shows that we're not pushing the stock turbo fully you could probably get a little bit more boost at this top end and get make a little bit more power but you need a custom tune for that again i probably could have gotten better pump gas numbers out of this tune if i waited and let the car cool down but i just wanted to get a baseline and these are just the numbers in the real world so we can move on to the E40 numbers now. To get to that E40 mix, I had a 5 gallon gas can in my trunk full of E85 and I just poured it in my tank and then we're running it on the dyno just to get the old fuel out the fuel lines and then get that E85. So I'm using the app just to see the content and you can see it's slowly going up and we're eventually going to get to E40. Actually, I guess I messed up on my calculation, so I only got to about E38, but this should do. This is just the front angle and that turbo sounds amazing. Now uh, looking at the numbers, you can see we're already picking up some power. We hit 442 on this one, so let's let it rest and do a couple more. So this was after letting the car cool down for around 10 to 15 minutes. You can see when I walk over the dyno it actually says 498 for the max power but that is just the car shifting into the next gear so that's not accurate. But we're going to do another run just to get a cleaner number. For the last run I took the air intake cover off. I don't know how big of a difference that made but letting the car cool down definitely did. Here's the numbers, I'll come back to it, but we can take a look at the data log just to get a better picture. So this is the first pull for the E40 map, and you can see that we start the pull around 2000 RPM, and then the boost peaks at around 3600 at 22 PSI, and then it stays around 21 PSI until about 6000 RPM, and then the boost starts to fall off to around 18 PSI. You can actually see the map is requesting 22 PSI, but I guess the turbo can't feed enough air or maybe it's an issue with the off-the-shelf map. You can see the wastegate duty is around 92 uh, so I'm sure there's a little bit more duty and you can meet that boost and make more power but I think you would have to get a custom tune for that. Looking at the cylinder timing correction you can see on the first pull we are getting some timing correction like 6 to 8 and then as we go higher in the RPM, it does seem to fall down. I'm just assuming that the car is still getting used to the ethanol and the tune. So we can look at the next run we had. So this is the last log. This is the one that made the most power. Uh, so you can see uh, boost, same thing. We started the pull at around 2000 and then it peaked around 3600 RPM. like around 20 psi and then you can see it maintains that 20 psi most of the way until about 6000 rpm and then you can see it fall off a little bit this is similar to the first pull and you can see the cylinder timing on this one is a lot better uh, it's basically zero early on and then it doesn't go more than two to three and then for the wastegate duty we can see it's still at 90 so there's a little bit more room and I'm sure you could get more power if you actually had these 22 pounds of boost up top uh, but I just wanted to get some numbers for the off-the-shelf map if we look at the ethanol content it's around 36 37 uh, 38 up top this is a little bit lower than E40 so I'm sure with a little bit more ethanol we would have made a little bit more power but I'm still happy with the numbers we got and when I get the hybrid turbo we can compare these numbers so these are the final dyno numbers the green line is on pump gas for the MHD stage 2 high pressure fuel pump tune 
and then the blue line is E40. Uh, so around 388 on pump gas and almost 460 on E40. I definitely could have gotten better numbers on the dyno, but I didn't want to spend too much time obsessing over numbers. Uh, I just wanted to get a baseline for something to compare to when I get my hybrid turbo. You can see the stock turbo kind of falls off towards the end, and I'm sure you could make a little bit more power with a custom tune, maybe maybe 480 to 500 to the wheels, but I think the off-the-shelf off map is great for the stock turbo. I will definitely try to get some more numbers when I get the hybrid turbo installed and tuned. So stay tuned for that and hopefully I can get that here soon. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try my best to get to it. I should have the hybrid turbo coming in sometime next week, so I'll see if I can get that installed and maybe post the install video. But yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully we can crack 600 wheel horsepower.